Hello guys, so I am very excited to be starting my U2 album journey, and I am going in order, so first up is Boy, and I'm going to get right into it. If you'd like to see this video uncut, you can do so on my Patreon. The link is in the description. Alright, first up, I Will Follow, which I have recently reacted to. Still in love with the sound of the bass. when Bono goes breathy. Yeah, I still just find that song so interesting in terms of the production. For example, the instruments they used for percussion and the way they used them almost made it sound like they were using random sound effects, and somehow it worked. Also, them starting off the album with such a vulnerable track lyrically is making me wonder where this album is going to go. Not that I'm shocked by it, I'm genuinely curious as to where else they will go lyrically. So, next up, Twilight. That melody is so pretty. That delay was so trippy. <laughs> That could definitely be a top three track, but obviously I've got a ways to go, so we'll see. I interpreted the lyrics as being about a young boy coping with having to grow up perhaps rather quickly or just growing into adulthood in general. Either way, I thought Bono's vocal performance did a great job of painting a picture of someone struggling in that way, and I really don't think I'm going to be able to get that guitar melody out of my head. Next up we have On Cat Dove. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I looked it up and I tried. If I failed, you guys will have to let me know. I've really enjoyed the lightness of the drums so far. That was nice. I don't know why, but the song is simultaneously relaxing me and spooking me a little. <laughs> It's 
quite menacing. Okay, I may go back because it looks like those songs transition into one another, but I really enjoyed that track, and I'm not quite sure why. I guess it was that blend of menacing and comforting. <laughs> Loved that aggressive sounding guitar in the background, as well as the section of the song where Bono is just vocalizing. In fact, I think that section where he was just vocalizing was my favorite part of the song. <laughs> It was so atmospheric, and I loved the way it made me feel. And according to Genius, the song is about a short relationship Bono had with a woman while he was split from his now wife. And it seems like he was comparing her to a black cat and he a dead bird because he was not at all as invested as she was. Okay, I went back a few seconds so I can fully experience this transition. Wow, that was so clean. So I just checked Genius again, and they have listed quite a few quotes from Bono explaining some of the tracks, and the black cat seamlessly flowing into, into the heart was intentional because those songs are tied together thematically. That said, I think Into the Heart was pretty self-explanatory. It's just reminiscing on the younger years, but I personally loved the track mostly because of the instrumentation. Obviously, there weren't many lyrics anyways, but it felt like a huge release sonically. All right, out of control. Got me again with the switch up during the chorus. Out of control it's definitely in the running for top three <laughs> i pretty much instantly fell in love with the sound of that track and i especially loved the verses melodically and lyrically that song just screamed teen angst that's what i got from it at least and even though i'm in my early 20s now i can still kind of relate to those feelings i'm sure we all can at least a little next up stories for boys Ooh, that was intense, to say the least. Lovely background vocals. Go 
So the instrumentation is my favorite part of that track on my initial listen. I didn't love it as much as some of the previous tracks, but that's easily been my favorite moment so far on the album in terms of drums. Okay, next up we have The Ocean, but it's just over 90 seconds, so... <laughs> All right. Water at the end was a nice touch. That definitely felt like an interlude to me, but I don't know if they would consider it one. Oddly enough, it felt to me like an extension of stories for boys, because both of those tracks reminded me of escapism, or just daydreaming, even if that's not where they were going lyrically. That's what I felt when I was listening to them. Also, I just had to look up the Dorian Gray story for context, and I had heard of the name prior, but I never looked into it. But I would assume the connection is Dorian Gray being very vain. I think that's something a lot of teenagers experience as well. And next up, A Day Without Me. Is so fun. Honestly, I hesitate to gush over the sound of the guitar on certain tracks because. <laughs> I almost lost my train of thought. Uh, what I was trying to say is, I hesitate to complement the guitar work on each song, because the edge never fails to blow me away, so it would get a bit repetitive. <laughs> I really enjoyed that song. It was very expressive. This is going to sound weird, but I feel like you 2 as a band would encourage their fans to be weird. So, in all honesty, that song felt like a painting to me. Or rather, listening to it made me feel like I was observing an artist paint something beautiful. There is no way to express that without me sounding high. And I'm not, but you know what? I'm okay with it. That said, the lyrical content was very dark. According to Genius, it was inspired by one of Bono's friends attempting to take his life. If that is true, oh my goodness. But in terms of the song, I really enjoyed the juxtaposition of the dark lyrics and the very joyful sounding production. All right, another time, another place. Already liking the sound of this. His vocal is much more upfront compared to some of the previous tracks. You know, that track got progressively better for me. I also like the way they used repetition with We Lie. I feel like that 
may have had a double meaning, even if that's not the case, still sounded cool. The Electric Company. Nice guess, but wrongo! I did say Electric Company instead of Electric Co, but... I am innocent. Not to be too on the nose here, but this instrumentation does feel quite energetic. was another 10 out of 10 outro. Very intense, very emotional as well. And after reading up on the lyrics, I understand why it was so emotional, because the song is apparently about a friend of the band's having to go through electroconvulsive shock therapy. To say that sounds horrible would be a gross understatement. Another great song from U2 about something tragic. And lastly, we have Shadows and Tall Trees, Saturday Manatee. Back to the cold, restless streets at night. Talk to myself about tomorrow night. What do I get? I just realized that says Saturday matinee, not manatee. How embarrassing. Wow. I am speechless. Okay, you guys will have to let me know about Saturday matinee. I didn't see that part of the song referenced on Genius, so I'm going to go out on a limb here and say it's maybe a bonus track that wasn't included on Spotify. If that is the case, or if I'm missing something, please do fill me in. But Shadows and Tall Trees felt like the perfect closer to this album because it kind of felt like the culmination of everything that was discussed in tracks one through 10. And my biggest takeaway on this first listen is I feel like I have a much better understanding of how they grew up. Obviously, I was not a teen in Ireland in the 70s, but like I said earlier, I think there are so many themes and so many of these songs that we can all relate to at any point in our lives. I thought the production on this album was very solid, and it makes me even more excited to see where they go from here, because I know for a fact that things get much more exciting, much more grand. So my favorite tracks were I Will Follow, Twilight, On Cat Dove, Into the Heart, Out of Control, a Day Without Me, and The Electric Co. And my top three would be Twilight, Out of Control, and The Electric Co. Guys, let me know your thoughts on this album and your top three. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe for more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.